green is that there's three parts, three very important parts to this definition. Um, so invisible disabilities, the first part is, is what they could be. So it could be a cognitive difficulty, mental health disorder, learning difference, physical pain, fatigue, or other physical conditions. Okay? So it could be cognitive, it could be mental health, it could be learning, it could be physical. That's part one. Part two, that are not apparent to the onlooker. So that's the invisible part. You can't tell by looking at somebody that they have a disability. And part three is significantly impacts one's daily activities. That's the disability part. It significantly impacts your daily activities. So, um, ready to talk? Yeah. Everybody finish chewing? Okay, I want you to tell me, just shout them out. Examples. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. Arthritis. Arthritis. Anxiety. Anxiety. Dyslexia. Dyslexia. You, you're hitting all the categories. You got mental health. What's that? ADD. ADD, yes. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, yes. Dyslexia, depression. Okay, so you have a really good handle on this. All right, so just a few examples, just a few. Uh, we got AIDS and other STIs, allergies, Asperger's, blah, 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 chronic fatigue, syndrome, Crohn's disease, depression, fibromyalgia, food allergies, hyperhidrosis, migraines, narcolepsy, personality disorders, do, 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 and many, 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 many more. Just to give you a scope, I just want you to see on the screen a small portion of some of the conditions that could be invisible disabilities. Now, before I go any further, that definition is not always fulfilled all the time by the same conditions. There's a lot of caveats here. Um, some conditions that are on this list might be an invisible disability. They might not be an invisible disability because they may or may not be visible, and they may or may not be a disability. Um, type 2 diabetes, for example. To some people, it significantly impacts their daily life, therefore disability. To other people, they may have the condition, but it doesn't really affect their lives that much. Not a disability. Um, let's pull, pull out lupus. I know somebody who has lupus. Um, some days, because of her pain and her unsteadiness and her dizziness, she has to walk with a cane mobility aid, therefore visible. Other days, she does not. Now it's invisible. Sometimes she also has the, um, the signature um, rash, the butterfly rash on her face, visible. Sometimes she doesn't have the rash, invisible. So it can go back and forth. And then also there are some conditions that um, you, just because you have an invisible disability doesn't mean you have something forever. So some people with disabilities, it's a temporary disability. That could go for physical or um, invisible. You know, uh, you could be in a car accident and have a visible disability. Uh, you could be in a wheelchair or have crutches or something and then you heal. Or you could be going through a really terrible divorce and have really bad depression that you're eventually able to work through so that invisible disability is um, no longer your invisible disability. Okay, that being said, I want to talk about the prevalence a little bit just so that you know how widespread invisible disabilities are and what the trends are. There are so, you saw the list of conditions. So going through statistics, there's, you could make a lifetime out of just going through statistics. I try to pull some, out, some things out just to show you uh, where we're going with this. So 73 to 74% of people with disabilities have invisible disabilities. That means for everybody that you see and you can tell they have a disability, there's three more people out there with a disability that you can't tell. 10% of Americans, that's 32 million people, have an invisible disability. And I actually, I honestly think that number's a little low. Um, so I'm gonna show you some trends in the increase in invisible disabilities because they are overall increasing. Uh, people with autoimmune diseases are increasing. I'm not a medical professional. I'm just going to explain things as best I can. Autoimmune, the gist of it is your own immune system is attacking healthy parts of your body the same way it would go after a disease. There's a whole variety of autoimmune diseases, including lupus I mentioned, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, ankylosis. I always make this face when I try to say this word, ankylosis spondylitis, um, Crohn's disease, and I'm listing, I'm sorry. There's a bunch of them. They all affect you differently. They are degenerative. They are progressive. They don't go away. Um, that means they get worse over time. 
Uh, percentage of people with fibromyalgia is rising. Fibromyalgia sometimes gets classified with autoimmune diseases and rheumatoid diseases, but it's uh, more of a nerve disorder. They think. This one's not even understood. Um, now, there's a few things going on with this statistic. Percentage is rising, but also it's getting more readily accepted by the medical com community and more diagnosed. There's no clear way to diagnose other than ruling other things out, but up until about 20 years ago, it wasn't even recognized as an actual disease or illness. It was categorized as a mental illness, and it was nicknamed, and uh, Carlos mentioned I also speak on women's empowerment, so I'm gonna step on my soapbox for just a second. It was nicknamed the Bored Housewives Disease because there is a great deal of sexism that does continue to happen in the medical community and because it was mostly women over 40 who were getting, because that's who usually gets fibromyalgia is women over 40, um, they decided that this was because, oh, their children moved out of the house and they're bored, so they're just going to complain about this weird pain. Okay. Um, but fibromyalgia, it's known for uh, a pain disorder, but it has a lot more going on and there are uh, mental health um, symptoms of fibromyalgia, including uh, mm, um, depression, anxiety. There's cognitive symptoms of fibromyalgia. There's a cognitive impairment nicknamed fibrofog, uh, brain fog. And then there's also other things going on like irritable bowel syndrome, uh, fatigue. Okay, I'm listing again. Next, percentage of people with ADHD is rising. I'm going to talk about stigma a little bit uh, with different conditions in a bit, but this is one of those that does have the stigma. Fibromyalgia also has a stigma because it's, it's one of those where people really don't believe you. Um, ADHD, again, comes with a stigma because people say that it's overdiagnosed and that it's just a behavior problem or that it's overmedicated, but it's not true. If you really dig into the facts of ADHD, it is on the increase and it is a very real condition. And there's a lot of theories as to why this is increasing, but I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not a medical professional. Okay, that being said, I want you to go back to 10% of Americans have invisible disabilities. That's one in 10 people. My question to you is, I want you to think about this. Who is your one in 10? Think about it. If one in 10 people have an invisible disability, that's one in 10 people in your family, one in 10 people in your life, one in 10 people in each class you have, could be you. To show you what life with an invisible disability is like, I think it'll make it easier to talk about everything else we have to talk about, I want to introduce you to some of my one in ten. I want to introduce you to a few of my friends who have